Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. It's time to go back to Starve Harve. Uh, he of the he lore. Uh, if you're not familiar with what I mean by that, he uh, takes these uh, time periods in history and goes to Wikipedia timelines and runs them through a bunch of translations, as I'm sure he'll explain. And what we get is a bunch of hilarious takes on actual history. And so then what I try to do is decipher what's really going on as we all have a good laugh uh, and get entertained a little bit, but hopefully learn a thing or two along the way. So that's the goal here. And today we're taking a look at destroying 19th century history with bad translations. All of these reactions to Starve Harve I've put in a playlist. If you click on the homepage for my YouTube channel, you can go to the playlist and see all of them. Uh, but I'll also put the link in the description to the original content so you can check it out without my commentary and see some of his other videos I have not yet done reactions to. I want to give a shout out to Todd in Jacksonville, Arkansas and Garland in Houston, Texas. Thank you guys so much for your support on Patreon. Let's dive into this one. I took Wikipedia's timeline of the 19th century and ran it through Google Translate using languages with the worst translation quality. This was the result. 1801. Alexander Hamilton marched that night with the Confederate Army to New York City for the news. <laughs> All right, so I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I mean, Alexander Hamilton did live in New York City. By 1801, he is... Um, working as a lawyer again he's out of public life he's had his whole um sex scandal with maria reynolds uh and that whole thing um he's in the last couple of years of his life uh, he's in his mid to late 40s by this point he did start a newspaper in new york the new york post so i don't know is, new york is that dangerous that they need an army just to get a newspaper the second world war in latin and french by abukir 1802, the Franco-British alliance ended after World War II. <laughs> the British were, the French were one of their main um, rivals for most of history, most of their history, and certainly in 1802 when you're in the middle of the wars of the coalition. This is when Napoleon is first consul uh, in France, but he's not yet emperor. That becomes uh, the case in 1804. It was written by Ludwig van Beethoven months ago. 1803. The war between England and France was again carried on. Then he returned to the he! Napoleonic Wars. Who knew? I mean, we, we had to know he was going to show up. He would be a part of the Napoleonic Wars. William Symington described the Charlotte Dunn as the first working ship. <laughs> it's about time. When France bought the Louisiana Territory in North America, it was nearly twice the size of the United States. Uh, France, Napoleon sells the Louisiana Territory to uh, the United States. It's kind of one of those funny things, right? Because France is not exactly occupying the, the territory. Mostly New Orleans is the big chunk of that as far as population goes. But um, it's full of Native Americans, indigenous tribes at this point. Uh, so they're basically selling land they're not living in to other people who aren't living in the land and not really considering the people who are actually living there. The Pacific Ocean, later called Destiny, reached the western parts of the United States. So I'm guessing we're talking about Manifest Destiny, the idea that this is a big step toward the United States. Uh, the idea of Manifest Destiny is this idea that the the... United States was destined to stretch from the Atlantic to the Pacific and everything in between. It, this was very much a part of what drove westward expansion for the U.S. And also includes the United States and Mexico. <laughs> when was it called Destiny? I'm Mexico doesn't even exist yet as a separate country. It's still part of Spain in 1803. What's that? <laughs> 1804. Accordingly, the steam engine was first used. I take morphine. <laughs> so I don't know if 1804 is the first year that the steam engine is used, but if it is, it was uh, in the West Midlands of England, I think, is where it was really first put to use. Um, in fact, the first uh, real working example of a steam engine being used for commercial purposes, I believe, was in Tipton, which is where my family came from in the West Midlands, uh, to pump water out of a coal mine or something like that. Okay. 
Beethoven's Eroica Third Symphony marks the beginning of the, the Middle, Middle Ages. Ages. Wow. Which ended in the late 1400s. 1805, Game 3 in France. Game 3. Uh, so 1805, uh, would that, that wouldn't be the War of the Third Coalition at that point. Had to look it up. I guess, yeah, that is the War of the Third Coalition. So that would be what we're talking about in 1805. That's also the year of the Battle of Trafalgar, which, of course, is one of the great British victories. It's a naval victory, but it, in many ways, could be seen as really one of the first big steps toward Napoleon's eventual downfall because it's that British blockade of the mainland of Europe uh, that is going to really eventually push Napoleon for his continental system, which is going to push him into war with Russia, which is going to be what leads to his end. <laughs> 1806, Napoleon named his brother King of Naples. It was given to him by Joseph Bonaparte, the brother of Louis Bonaparte, King... Joseph and Napoleon... Joseph, I think, is Napoleon's older brother, and they were very, very close. I've been... Um, in the process of doing this like 30 hour audio book on the life of Napoleon, a lot of it focuses on his letters that he wrote, which he left tens of thousands of them behind. Uh, and he wrote regularly to Joseph and you could tell that Joseph is one of the very few people throughout his life that he really trusted and really confided in a, a great deal. But uh, uh, Napoleon in 1805 is also, that's when he's going to win the Battle of Austerlitz, which many people consider to be kind of one of his greatest victories. Um, but uh, the Holy Roman Empire is dissolved in 1806. Uh, and so that's when you're going to see Napoleon. Napoleon was always all about nepotism when it came to his family, and he, came, he was a part of a big family. King of Belgium, 1807, UK, US attacks Slavic trade. The Treaty of Tilset sent Napoleon into Eastern Europe. They attacked Slavic trade. They attacked the slave trade. Uh, this is the United States uh, and uh, the UK, both at right about the same time, uh, outlaw the slave trade. And there will be a lot of cooperation in the decades to come between the US and the British uh, in kind of patrolling Western Africa and regulating people from uh, the slave trade. He became the last player of Borussia. <laughs> Leaving Borussia. Copenhagen, like Dortmund, he the, took the, the, the football ships team. Of the Davis fleet. Humphrey Davy destroyed potassium no! and sodium. <laughs> They're just gone. The elements are gone. <laughs> Eighteen oh eight. He didn't destroy the, them. It's where he. I think he, like, I wouldn't really say he discovered them, but he was able to like isolate them. Gulf War. The Gulf War. Wow. Eighteen oh nine. Napoleon accepted his son as Pope. His son, uh, who I don't even think was born yet in 1809. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, his son, that is his son there, who was known as Napoleon II and is buried in uh, Paris with him. He was known as the King of Rome. So I don't know if that's where the confusion is on that one. Roman Empire. But I don't think he was born yet. <laughs> Every time it's Rome. Pope Pius captured Napoleon and bound him to the river Air. 1810. He, he, I think he excommunicated him is what they're trying to say there. He took the floor. He again, man. Doing He's like everywhere. Dance routine. 1812. Britain has many economic problems. True. It was a bad year for Raday's party. 1814. Elisha Collier founded the Rolling what? Stones. What? 1815. I don't even know Europe what that one's supposed to mean. its power and strength at the Vienna Conference. So the Congress of Vienna is so consequential because it really sets up so much of what ends up happening in the next two centuries, really. I mean, we are still in many ways living in a world that is a consequence of the Congress of Vienna. Uh, we've done some videos about that. Uh, definitely something that's worth talking about because uh, it's so consequential. The European side is trying to find out if this is true or not. What? <laughs> Probably not. Liberal forces and government have changed for the better. In 1914, peace began in England. That, oh. It did not. No, 1914 is when World War I breaks out, but we're not talking about that yet. Hundred days later, Napoleon won the Battle of Waterloo. So the hundred days is what's talked about when Napoleon's initially... Uh, when he when he first ab abdicates in 1814, when the coalition marches on on France and on Paris, um, he abdicates. He is exiled to Elba, 
which um, he basically is left with the title, like basically he's left as a monarch and Elba's kind of his own little fiefdom that he gets to have, but it's really close offshore, right? Uh, and so he is able to escape from Elba. He lands in France. He gathers an army and that hundred days is that three months or so where he's once again kind of running the show in France and Waterloo happens and then they they get smart and they send him to the South Atlantic uh, in a place that he can't possibly leave. Victory at the end of the Napoleonic Wars. He won. <laughs> GG. He's won. GG. <laughs> 1816. American freedom, not a DJ. <laughs> Just in case you thought he was. 1817. A legal battle began in Florida. Prince Charles died shortly after his birthday. Wow. Okay. okay. Um, no, the first Seminole War, I think is what we're talking about there in Florida. <laughs> 1818. Mary Shelley tells the story of Frankenstein. Pure freedom. That's not Frankenstein. That's his monster. Anyway. <laughs> 1821. Destruction of Turks in Navarre. 1823. After the Anglo-Burmese War. The British occupied Burma. Now Africa. Now Africa. 1825. What? Aluminum pipe. This is the third day of December in Russia. So uh, I want to say 1825 would be the Decemberist revolt in Russia. Um, I don't know, really know very little about that, but I know there was a Decemberist revolt, and I believe it was around this time. So it would make sense if that's the case. Whole oh, year. <laughs> 1826, after the last Russo-Persian War, Russia defeated the Persian Empire. Who Impressive. will lose the game first? Persia. That's the answer. <laughs> extermination was banned in Ottoman Germany. Ottoman now, if anybody Germany. Anybody knows extermination. It's Ottomans and Germans. 1828, the Tasmanian War darkens Tasmania. Prime Minister Robert Peel decided to deny the freedoms of religion to British citizens, saying that the protections were weak. 1829. Who invented the th first electric car? Who done it? Is it the second war I, between... I think that one... I mean, obviously there's no electric cars being built then, but I think maybe electric motors at that point of some kind. I don't know what the purpose would have been. Russia and Turkey? <laughs> Is it? 1830, Congress passed the Secession Act, which allowed Mesopotamian leaders east of the Mississippi to make peace with the natives. Are there any Mesopotamian leaders east of the Mississippi? Greater Columbia was opened, and the District of Columbia... I I'm trying to figure out where the Indian Removal Act gets named as the Secession Act. Maybe the idea of removal somehow, but the Indian Removal Act uh, is a pretty controversial one in American history. Uh, obviously, that's when the president is able to negotiate treaties uh, with native tribes to get them moved west of the Mississippi. Um, particular, some tribes, a lot of these tribes, like the Cherokee, for example, are very much modernized. They have their own constitution, their own government. They, they dress very much like white Europeans do. Um, so there's a lot of controversy there because some of the tribes actually appealed to the Supreme Court and even won. And then Andrew Jackson basically said, well, they won the court ruling, but now let's see the court enforce it. And then just did what he wanted to anyway. Was replaced by the District of Columbia. Grand Columbia Panama. was replaced by DC. Okay. Ecuador and Venezuela, question mark. You tell me. In November, Poland rebelled against Russia. These are not... I told him about the last battle that took place in Yogyakarta and Sakata, 1831, two days after the terrorist attack on Nathaniel. And Nathaniel. So this would be the Nat Turner Rebellion in 1831. It's a, a slave rebellion. They, uh, they kill a whole bunch of white slave owners, but eventually they're rounded up, and uh, many of them are executed after a couple of days, and this leads to some significant changes in laws in places like Virginia uh, when it comes to things like educating your slaves. Associates in Southampton, Virginia, on the August 22nd. Charles Darwin's Greyhound mission. A dog. The Gauls attacked the Albans. Capodistra, the first king of Greece, was killed by Napoleon. That's impressive. Napoleon's been dead for a decade at this point. 
<laughs> didn't he die? But did he, didn't he die? <laughs> Cherokee <laughs> Sheriff John Ross is Cherokee and Irish George in America. Impressive. <laughs> he did one of those like 23 in May's. He just found out. He <laughs> defended the rights and freedom of the Cherokee in the Supreme There's Court. There's the court case I was in talking 1830, about. 1830, where five million Irish died. State of America. <laughs> 1833. That's Windsor Castle. Slavery was abolished in England. Yep. Thanks be to God. 1834. Thanks be to God. He, so, uh, one of the big driving forces behind the abolition of the slave trade and then later of slavery itself in the British Empire is William Wilberforce, who is one of my personal heroes. Big fan of the guy. Very interesting fellow. If you've never seen the movie Amazing Grace, uh, it's one of Benedict Cumberbatch's earliest uh, film roles. Real all-star uh, cast in that one. Um, and it tells the story of William Wilberforce. And uh, you got Kieran Hines in there and um, oh, what's the name of the actor that played Albert Finney, who played Daddy Warbucks in Annie, uh, plays John Newton, who wrote a, a poem about his own conversion experience where he had been the captain of a slave trading ship. Ends up uh, being converted to really kind of authentic Christianity by some Moravian, Moravian missionaries, becomes a, a pastor. Uh, and is a mentor to William Wilberforce. And John Newton wrote a poem about his experience called Faith's Review and Expectation, which uh, we know today as Amazing Grace, which is what gives the film its title. He became a prisoner under British law. <laughs> what did he do? Who knows? Free! 1836, <laughs> when Samuel Colt approached the woman and pulled a gun. Colt Patterson said nothing and shot her six times. <laughs> what? Wow. So the Colt revolver is one of the most famous revolvers in the world. And he sets that up, I think. I want to say Samuel Colt was from like around New Haven, Connecticut, somewhere in that area. Maybe uh, maybe Hartford. Uh, I've been to the cemetery where he's buried. I'm just trying to remember where in Connecticut it was. But six shooter revolver kind of becomes the staple of the Old West, even though we're decades away from the West. Instead of inventing the revolver or popularizing the revolver, he just shot a woman with it. <laughs> 1837. To the people. Queen Victoria was the most powerful monarch in England. Complete. She become, Well, she becomes the only monarch in England. She inherits the throne from her uncle, William IV. Money is an intellectual property. Don't be copyright infringing on my money. 1838. Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica fought each other during the American Civil War. Okay. So that is an American Civil War. 1839, France after the First and Second Opium Wars. The Qing Dynasty destroyed England. It's just gone. The United <laughs> States and Russia have agreed on trade and concessions with China. <laughs> China won so well. They get Russian vodka. They get sunflower seeds, Coors Light, and a cheeseburger. Okay. It's like amazing. <laughs> 1841, Richard turns the word dinosaur into a word for Owen. <laughs> Who's Owen? <laughs> I think this is around the time that the word dinosaur becomes a thing. I don't really know the origins of it, but I'm guessing that had something to do with it. William Henry Harrison, the first president of the United States, died. Eighteen forty. He was the first president the of the United States to die, so I'm guessing that's what that was about. Grandfather meets Perseus and tells the king to die in why. Office. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> what God has revealed to the world. He he is considered the leader of the Baha'u'llah and the founder of the Baha'i faith. Dr dream. Nice. Thousands of people are waiting for the coming of Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, this is the, uh, His uh, what do you call it? Um, it basically, this is when um, the the Millerite movement, uh, he, he announces that Jesus is coming back on this specific date, and it doesn't happen. And so they call it the Great Disappointment, but I'm guessing that's what that was about. Recovery was called the Great Depression. The Great Disappointment. Yeah. On May 24th, the world's first telegraph between East Timor and the United States. Where else would the world's first telegraph be? What is God doing? All good. I think the very first message sent by telegraph was, What hath God wrought? 
uh, like W R O U G H T. I think that's what that's probably referring to. Thanks. <laughs> There's a very, like, Christian faith to this article. Nautilus is here. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Wang signed an agreement between the United States and China. Who's Mr. Wang? <laughs> 1846, Oregon is the United States. Oregon signed the Treaty of Vienna. Parts of Idaho and Wyoming and Montana ceded to the United States. It's all Oregon now. After the Mexican-American War, Wilmot was criticized in the West for ending slavery. <laughs> the Wilmot Proviso, it's, it's one more. I mean, everything in the U.S. Uh, if you could sum up the first 80 years of American history, it would be with two words, slavery and manifest destiny. I guess that's three words. Two, two ideas, slavery and manifest destiny, drove everything in the United States. If you wanted to add a third... You could probably talk about uh, tariffs. 1847. Samuel Wise told Inak to wash his hands so he wouldn't be questioned. <laughs> what kind of questions are going on here? What's he got on his hands? No John idea. John of means. the Air wrote the Bronte Sisters. <laughs> John of the Air? Is that Jane Eyre? Is that one that the was communist written? communist language. In 1848, something new happened in Europe. Good. This is when you have all of the kind of rebellions break out in 1848, uh, revolutions, uh, some of them resulting in changes, some of them not so much. You've got the, uh, the Kaiser in Austria um, steps down in favor of his son, Franz Joseph, who takes over. Uh, you've got stuff happening in France, other places too. People run away. What happened? Why wouldn't they tell us? 1849, the first air mission was launched with 200 missiles on a message to the Vulcan Air Force. <laughs> the Constitution of the Roman Republic was the first law which established the death penalty. The first amendment to the Roman Republic Constitution, death. death. <laughs> there are seat belts and airbags. Nice. 1850, the Ice Age is over. Oh, thank goodness. 1851, Australia. 1854. Just, just Australia. I mean, we don't get anything more than that. Just Australia. To avoid wires and light. 1856, the first oil was produced in Romania. Neanderthals know the time. <laughs> Neanderthals know the time. Is this when we first came up with the idea that there was a Neanderthal man? That's a good question. And first, oil. I know in the United States, uh, the first real kind of discovery of oil in the ground is in a place that's actually known as Oil City today. But uh, there's Titusville, Pennsylvania. It's not far from me, like an hour away from me. Um, and I think it's Drake is the guy's name. And uh, there's an oil city there now. But Titusville was the nearby town where it happened. Um, maybe they discovered it earlier in Romania. Or maybe it's a... Uh, process for refining it i don't know 1857 the indian rebellion of 1857 british empire closes the east You're joseph just whitworth invented the first gun what about the gun that was used to shoot the woman what was that <laughs> the origin of seeds charles darwin is that really well that? whitworth the whitworth rifle is one of the first like long range rifles uh that's got like significant accuracy that you could use like as a sniper rifle it's origin of species, but it's just about seeds. How do seeds work? 1861, the American Civil War between the Confederate and Confederate Army. The Confederate and Confederate Armies. 1862, it was done with horses. But France is the first country in South Asia. True. 1863, the President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, declared his independence on September 22nd. He's, he's gone. That's interesting because it was September 22nd of 1862 that he announced to the public the Emancipation Proclamation, the provisional one. The final wording is formalized and takes effect on January 1st of 63. So interesting. Duong Multi's Grass Day painting is truly amazing. All right. <laughs> 1864, March 21st. Liar. May 21st. The Chincha War was an attempt to invade the American colonies of southern Spain. Spain has lost so bad that they're now being colonized. 
1865, America reinvents itself. 1866. End of the Civil after War. After the Prussian Austrian War, the German alliance collapsed, leaving Germany in the north and Hungary in the south. 1867. Alfred Nobel is the inventor of sulfur. He just invented sulfur. Isn't that naturally occurring? That's impressive, yeah. Um, I think that's probably when he invented dynamite. Can he claim this? In 1878, he traveled around the world. <laughs> 1868. Congratulations. <laughs> the famous Cro-Magans. Who is cro Cro-Magan? Cro-Magan. No, it's Cro-Magans now. Cro-Magnon? <laughs> Don't you know about the famous Cro-Magans? 1870, the Franco-Prussian War united... So it's an interesting time, though. I mean, if you think about some of the stuff that's happening here, you've got Neanderthal Man being announced and Cro-Magnon Man. A lot of this, a lot of these like men that they found, I'm not saying those particular ones, but sometimes they would find like just like a tooth or a bone that they didn't know what it belonged to, and they kind of invented like an entire species out of it. And then later on you found out that it was either a hoax or it was something else. Or, you know, so... It's all the part of the process of scientific discovery, right? Um, but you also have Origin of Species coming out about this time by Darwin. So a lot in dinosaurs, the word dinosaur being invented. Um, so the 19th century is really a time of just profound scientific discovery, stuff that we take for granted that beginning of the 1800s, they didn't even know about. It's Germany and Italy. Both kingdoms fell in Gaul. The Hansen Ball was designed by Rasmus Mulling Hansen and was the first commercial ball. I have no idea what that even what? means. <laughs> they didn't have balls before that. 1871. Otto von Bismarck challenged the interest of the Catholic Church during the Civil War in Germany. This is when Germany becomes an empire, right? Otto von Bismarck is the chancellor um, and Germany wins the Franco-Prussian War, it becomes the German Empire. Industrial Revolution 2, finally. Japan's feudal system collapsed. Henry Morton meets Stanley David. Henry Morton Lake Stanley Tanguka meets David Livingston. Nice. In 1873, the panic began. You well, can... it was called the Panic of 1873, so that makes sense. See yellow and blue shirts. True. The German War began in the blood of Ake. <laughs> It's violent. It's like Elden Ring law. <laughs> 1876. Queen Victoria became Miss India. Became the Empress of India. And that was a title that was passed down uh, in the monarchy until... Um, gosh, would that be King George the Sixth? Would he be the last Emperor of India? I think so. So, like, 19, late 1940s? <laughs> Richard Wagner's ring is the first sacred ring. The one ring. <laughs> we uh, tell you what, we learned a lot about Wagner. Um, not a good dude from everything I heard in my time in Germany and Austria. Uh, he certainly was very much loved by Ludwig II, the king of Bavaria, which is one of the things that led to Ludwig and his downfall. That's a story we need to get into at some point. Henry McCarthy, later Billy the Kid, kills Frankless <laughs> Cahill, the first black man. So Frank Cahill is uh, Henry McCarthy, not Henry McCarthy. I think Frank Cahill is the first man that Billy the Kid is supposed to have killed. But he wasn't black. I don't the think. largest train station in the United States. Dead horse. <laughs> Asphalt Monday is shown on Tuesday. What? <laughs> What is that even supposed to mean? <laughs> what is Asphalt Monday? <laughs> Happy Asphalt Monday, everyone. I am recording this on Monday. 1879, Belgium was involved in the political conflict that led to World War I. True. So, uh, 1879, are we talking about... Um, I think this is a conflict that happens... I gotta look this up because I know the Anglo Zulu War is happening in 1879, but that doesn't have anything to do with Belgium. Okay, so apparently we're talking about something called the First School War. I'm not familiar with this. It lasted from 79 to 84 and resulted in a period of nearly 50 years of Catholic political dominance. It was followed by the se a Second School War. Um, so it was a uh, political crisis over the issue of religion in education. Interesting. 
Okay, that's something I did not know. So you learn something new every day, folks. There you have it. 1881, pig. Alexander P. the Great. That was Garfield being uh, shot at the uh, rail, rail station in Washington, D.C. is what that illustration was of. Died. Damn. The destruction of the Russian Empire has begun. Enjoy Shambhad Guria de Toro. What does that even mean? Three deep and a tank were discovered in Godalming, England. What is three deep and a tank? Sounds like a sitcom. 1883, the hat is ready. Krakatoa is the largest volcano in the world and the tallest tower built by Thomas Edison. By Thomas Edison? What? (laughs) Krakatoa is, uh, that's in the South Pacific, Indonesia, that area. Um, Massive, massive explosion. Uh, Probably the loudest sound ever recorded in human history. Um, Circled the earth several times, the shockwave. It was just crazy. He's taking credit for Krakatoa now. 1884, the effectiveness of the Berlin Wall appears. The European slave trade was encouraged abroad. The first electric car was built by Thomas Parker in Wolverhampton. There's the West Midlands again. Hiram Maxis was the first man to write machine music. What is machine music? You listen to machine music at all? (laughs) Wait, was that Maxim? I'm guessing that's Hiram Maxim who invents the first self-powered machine gun. What is machine music? You listen to machine music at all? <laughs> the singer began to beat the table and his clothes loudly. Okay, no it wasn't. 1886, the Statue of Liberty was created by Coca-Cola Java. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm not having this misinformation. So, uh, I don't know where the Coca-Cola Java part comes from. Uh, but Statue of Liberty is constructed in 1886. Uh, it was actually a gift much earlier to the United States from France. Bartholdi, I think, is the guy who made it. But it takes a while for them to raise the funds for the base and for the assembly of the statue. It was built in Paris, I think in Paris. It was in France. And then it had to be crated up and shipped over and then put back together again. Was Coke invented that same year? 18, that might be what that is. The first, the mail in- the first what, what we call in Northeast Ohio, pop to be invented, you have Coke, Pepsi, and Dr. Pepper, I think, were the original three. And I think they were all invented by Civil War veterans. Ace, Prince Rudolf and Baroness Marie of Austria. In this story, the old man is killed. No, not story. the old man. 1890. Today, salt is distributed through Europe. And- I did. I, visit, I just visited the grave of Prince Rudolf. He is the son of Franz Joseph, who is the emperor of Austria-Hungary when World War I breaks out, and he was his only son. And the reason that Franz Ferdinand, who was Franz Joseph's nephew, was the heir to the throne, the one that was assassinated that kind of sparks the war, is because Franz Joseph's son had died in this suicide pact. It was a murder-suicide with a woman that he wanted to be with but couldn't be with because he uh, couldn't marry her. And um, So it's a murder-suicide. And then not too many years after that, Franz Joseph's wife is assassinated uh, in Switzerland by an Italian. And America. I still use the electric chair. <laughs> 1890. Uh, I guess that's probably the first year that the electric chair was used. William Kemmler is the first man to be executed. He had killed a woman named Tilly Ziegler. I think he'd killed her with an axe or something. But they basically cooked him. Like they didn't use, there was a big current war going on uh, between Westinghouse and Edison and Edison convinced them to use the wrong kind of current uh, which basically cooked the guy instead of electrocuting him the way he was supposed to be (laughs) okay Uh, Vincent Van Gogh died oh sorry Vincent Van Gogh (laughs) died I saw (laughs) in the I, I'm going to be seeing a couple of my Dutch friends this week. We're going to Verdun together. And uh, Marcel and Sander are from, both from the Netherlands. And my first trip to the Netherlands, uh, we had a long conversation about their pronunciation because their G pronunciation is very difficult for Americans. It's like that. Oh, it is very much like Grosbeck. There's this place called Grosbeck is what it says on the map. But it's like Grosbeck, and I, I, you know, native Dutch speakers can't do it very well. The box. <laughs> After the overthrow of Kaiser Wilhelm II, Kaiser Wilhelm, 
German President Otto von Bismarck made a policy that opposed Bismarck's ideas and policies. 1890s. I guess that's probably when Kaiser Wilhelm ousts Bismarck, um, which was a huge, huge mistake on his part. Leo XIII, Pontifus Maximus, Apostle of God, Defender of the First Fair Society. 1892, Football Stadium. Fingerprint recognition is first used. What is your name? What is Football it, Stadium. What's your date of birth? What's your mother's maiden name? <laughs> 1895. Fingerprinting is uh, adopted for the first time around this time, which would have been really handy a few years earlier with the uh, Jack the Ripper case in 1888. But I don't know what the football stadium one was supposed to be about. I've dated in Japan during the First Sino-Japanese War. F. 1896, the Athen Olympic Games are approaching. Henry Becquerel and Marie Curie. So I think Curie 1896, would that be the very first Olympic game, modern Olympic Games, which I think were in Athens? I would guess that's probably when that was. J.J. Thompson does not have an email address. If you wanted to get in touch, I'm sorry. <laughs> 1897. In 1893, his life ended. No, not his! <laughs> Why are we talking about it in 1897, though? <laughs> He's always dying. Until, like, World War II, he was dying constantly. And then he just, like... It must have enabled God mode or something. 1898. I'm trying to figure out what that could be. There was a, a panic in the United States, another financial panic. that So maybe the panic of 1893 ended in 1897? I don't know if that's when it ended, but that could be what that is. I also saw Zeppelin LZ. Zeppelin LZ. Boxing LZ. of the New Chinese. Millennium War begins between liberals and conservatives in Colombia. <laughs> the emperor intended to rule China for 11 days. Herbert Wells declares World War II. That's kind of early. <laughs> it's, it's on now, boys. <laughs> How come he's allowed to do that? 1899, British victory. I could sum up there. Just, yeah, just, British. just British victory. <laughs> Nowhere in particular. Simple. More than a million people died in Indiana. Damn. 1900, Humbert, King of Italy. He invaded the eight lands of China. I have no idea what that's supposed to be either. <laughs> that's it. That's the last thing that happened. Wow. All right. That. Wait, what's this? So we're going to end with he. All right. That was fun. It's lighthearted. I think I got a few of those things right. Let me know what I missed or what I got wrong in trying to figure out what all that stuff was supposed to be. Use the comment section below. Uh, and we'll get back to some real history tomorrow, I promise. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.